Hello and welcome to Tinderloss Gaming and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my playthrough of Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. Um, we are going to be getting this on the table um, after the last attempt of Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition um, which requires an app to play. Um, all went a bit wrong which is really annoying for me. So we've gone back to basics. We've gone back to basics for this uh, playthrough. Good old cardboard good old dice uh and no no app required i'm not having a go at apps i think they're really good and i'm really enjoying but slightly frustrated at the last uh, attempt at recording because of uh, an error with the app but anyway let's not dwell on that what are we doing well we're going to be playing one of the scenarios from from arkham horror and um yeah we're going to be using the next few sessions to to play through and see how we get on um, I really hope you're enjoying what I'm doing on the channel. Um, if you could like and subscribe, that would be really helpful. We are now heading to the heady heights of nearly 100 subscribers, which is really awesome. I'm so happy with that. Um, but anyway, uh, if you could like and subscribe, that would be really, really helpful. So let's get across to the main table and see what we've got. Okay, we're across here at the table. Uh, we can see that uh, now Arkham Horror third edition uh, like its predecessor um, is a bit of a table hog it does take up a lot of table space so um, I've had to be quite uh, <laughs> in uh, um, quite good with the setup of how, how we're capturing everything but I think we've got everything that we need to capture on on the board obviously we've got our players down here which I'm going to go through in a sec we've got the board itself uh, and then we've got the um, two decks up there that we're going to be using through the course of the game. We've got our Mythos Cup here, which has got all of our counters in it. So um, we're going to just have a quick look at what we're playing. So we are going to be playing Ithaca's Children. Uh, and that reads, Ithaca the Wind Walker lurks in the frozen north. He is the cold wind that creeps into the soul and the hungry ice that entombs the unwary. Forsaken and alone, Ithaca spreads his influence in the cruel hope that he may get a terrible progeny, a new scion that would overcome even the elder gods. And our starting space um, is at uh, Velma's diary, diary, diner, which we've got our three characters over here, which I'll go through in a sec. And we've got um, a reckoning which is place one doom in any space in Innsmouth and in one doom in any space in Kingsport. And, and these two are an addition uh, in the new uh, one of the expansions. We've got Central Kingsport here and we've got Innsmouth Shore there. So looking on the back of the card, um, we've got a setup and we've got our monster deck, uh, which is the top bit, and I'll just make sure so that we know there's no shenanigans going on. Uh, let's oh, turn that off. Let's get our monster deck and give it a good old shuffle. Virtually set up the whole thing, but there's a few little bits that we need to just tidy up and finish off. So this video is going to be a little bit of final setup and obviously uh, a round or two of the game. So that's the monster deck all sorted. We'll put that there. We're going to be drawing from the back. Um, so we've done that. We've got our we've got our mythos cup sorted out here. Um, we have got um, according to the map, which is on the back of the card. We have got a doom in East Town up here. We have got a doom in Southside down here. We've got a doom in River Town up here. Doom in north side here, a Doom in downtown up here, a Doom in Innsmouth Shore here, and we've got two Doom in Central Kingsport down here. Also, it says to put the High Priest, so we've got the High Priest, which is this card here. Spawn at most Doom, but he doesn't, um, he spawns at the Innsmouth Shore and his lurker placed one doom in this space so he's going to be adding doom in as we go so he's up there on that that's pretty much it for the map in regards to 
the codex, which are these two cards down here. We'll put that card back. We've got 61, which is terror, and I'll read it. While the people you hope to protect cannot fathom the true depth of the danger that surrounds them, they feel it, just as the heart senses the stalking wolf. The maddening evil that infects this place has grown too strong to ignore, and what passes for normal life has become impossible. And it's got doom a uh, bit on it. It says, when a neighborhood has six or more doom, remove all doom from one space in that neighborhood and place one doom on the scenario sheet, then spread terror in that neighborhood. And uh, terror is one of the um, mechanics from one of the expansions. And again, I'll cover that off as we go. Before we resolve an encounter in the neighborhood with one or more attached terror cards, encounter one of those cards. An action, you gather support and organize resistance to the threat, and you're going to be testing influence. Uh, for each success you roll, you may discard one terror token or terror card from your neighborhood. It's a bit like a warding, um, similar principle. So that's um, Codex 61. And it told us to add Codex card 91, which is Cold Cruel Hunger. And that reads, you peek through the louvered shutters, searching for the source of that menacing call. There, floating ominously on the Arctic wind is a humanoid figure, stretched to bestial proportion. Its face is red with the blood of a recent meal. It sniffs the air for a moment before an icy gale bears down towards it on the next unsuspecting quarry. The predator must be stopped before you can further investigate this unnatural weather. Add card 92 to the codex. And again, this says when there are four or more doom on the scenario sheet, add card 103 to the codex and return this to the archive. So we need to add card 103 to the codex. Oh no, sorry, add card 92 to the codex, my apologies. Card 92 states, as you prepare to give chase, you spot a figure in a heavy dark cloak turning away from the twisted beast and down a dark windswept alley. A brief flare of soft light occludes your vision and the dark figure is vanished entirely. You cannot say whether the stranger is in league with the creature or is always a potential ally, but you are sure that you know something. When the Wendigo monster is defeated, flip this card. Action. Uh, when you, uh, you may take any number of clues from the scenario sheet and place them in your place area. Deal two damage to the Wendigo epic monster for each clue you take this way. So that's going to be going into the codex. So we'll put that there. Okay. Where do we put the Wendigo epic monster? Would help if I read it the right side up. Um, sorry. So it says um, the shutters clatter loudly as another blast of frigid wind rattles the diner's windows. Velma tuts softly and shakes her head as she warms the coffee with a fresh pot. Warms your coffee with a fresh pot. This weather, I swear they don't know it's supposed to be spring. Your commiseration is interrupted when a howl cuts through the night. Though you do not know the animal, your primal senses recognize the significance. Spawn card 104, the epic Wendigo monster at the unstable space after you spread starting doom. Flip this card. Right, so we need to do starting doom to get that going. 
So let's go back to the setup and we can um, do that. So we've prepared the event deck. I'll just give that a shuffle so we all know we're, we're on the straight and narrow. Weasel cut and put those back into the event deck. So that's that done. So we've prepared the event deck, we've done the monster deck, we've created the mythos cut, we'll turn over the page. We've created the headline deck, which is this deck here, which is a delightful deck. Again, give it a good old shuffle. Cat Weasel Cut, and that can go back. That's the headline deck. Prepare assets and display. That's this deck here. Again, these are really quite tricky to shuffle. I always drop at least one. That weasel cut and then we're going to take the top five cards of the deck and put them in as our display so first one is going to be liquid courage one cost item gives us two sanity basically that's a common item so we'll put that up there it's our first bit to buy that's one second one is going to be first aid kit two dollars action an investigator or ally in your space recovers one health. It's quite good. Nothing fantastic yet though. Third one is gonna be lucky cigarette case. Once per round, you may add one to the result of a dice when resolving a test. That's $5, quite punchy. Fourth one is gonna be painkillers. Similar to um, Liquid Courage, really. One dollar gives you two extra health. And then finally, fifth card is gonna be Secret Page. You get plus two law as part of the ward action for three dollars. That's quite good. So that's our assets done. Token pools we've done, we've done the archive, we've choose, well, we've got our investigators, I'll come back to our investigators in a minute. Um, final preparation, spawn slotting clues. Draw the top three cards of the event deck one at a time, for each card place a clue token in the central area. So the first clue is going to be in Central Kingsport, so we're gonna put a clue on there. And then we grab a couple of cards from the Central Kingsport deck, plus our clue card. And then we're gonna give them a good old, good old shuffle. <laughs> Quite difficult to shuffle three cards, but they're gonna go on the top of the Central Kingsport, so that's the first one. Second one, oh my God. It's gonna be Central Kingsport again. It looks like the third one's going to be that as well. Jeez. That is ridiculous. I've never had that. So there's the top two cards and then the third one goes in. I did shuffle these. You saw me shuffle them. Central Kingsport. Blinking heck. I've never known that. Right. There we go. Shuffling those cards. back on the top of the Central Kingsport deck. So that's um, spawning starting clues. We now place the doom. Place one doom for each space on the back of the snow. Yep, yeah, we've done that. Draw the bottom card of the event deck. And that's gonna be north side. And the doom is gonna go, oh. Arkham Horror and Curiosity Shop. 
So that is north side Arkham Advertiser, sorry, and the Curiosity Shop. Um, and then that's that, so that card goes underneath there, and then it's either the Arkham Advertiser or the Curiosity Shop as the unstable space. And let's go with the Curiosity Shop, shall we? Because that sounds like a fairly, and that's where the Wendigo is going to spawn there. Like that. Okay. So that's that. We've done that. I'll flip this card, which is 91, which is what we, we read afterwards. Four or more doom. Add card 92 to the codex, which is what we've done. Okay. I think on that basis we're ready to go across to see who's actually going to be taking on Ithaca's children. Who do we who's going to be in the frame? Okay, so let's have a look. First of all, we are going to be running with Preston Fairmont. Um, now his card says that he's a millionaire and he's got creature comforts. At the start of your turn, you may spend one dollar to recover one health or one sanity. You need to remember that. He starts off with four dollars. He's got a health of seven and a sanity of five. He's got a law of two, an influence of five, observation of two, strength of three, and will of one. And if I can just get this camera to work, we can see what we've got in regards to his. Let's get back. And hopefully, we get up the table cam. Here we go with the table cam. So we can see there that I've given uh, Preston family inheritance. Family inheritance, which has got a reckoning on it. Um, gain one dollar and all the money on this card. After you perform a gather resources action, place an additional two dollars on this card. So that's quite cool. And then he's got money talks, which is when you are resolving a test, you may spend one dollar to re-roll a dice. And that's got three sanity on it. That's pretty good. And then we've got Kate Winthrop who is a scientist and she's got uh, um, $2 and her one of her special rules is see the whole picture. After you perform a research, act, research action, you may focus a number of skills of your choice equal to the test result. Focus limit of three. Sorry, Preston's got a focus limit of three as well. She's got five health and seven sanity. She's got three law, two influence, four observation, two strength and two will. And if we get across to the table cam, just turn that off for a sec. And then back to the table cam, we can see Kate has got research notes, which is once per round when you would re roll a die, you may add one to the result of that die instead. And she's got flux stabilizer, which is once per round when a doom or non epic epic monster would be placed in your neighborhood you may discard it instead so that's very cool and then we have got Zoe Sabaras who's our lead investigator she's the chef and she's got um, a couple of special rules after you defeat a monster you may remove one doom from your space or recover one health and after you defeat a monster with elite, become blessed. So she is pretty awesome. So let's get back and uh, see what we've got on in regards to the card for Zoe. So hopefully you'll be able to see this in a second. We get out of the table cam. There we go. We've got Chef's Knife, which is a one-handed weapon. She gets plus two strength as part of an attack action. And after you re-roll a die when resolving a test, add one to result of that test. And she's got Zoe's Cross. 
after you become engaged with the monster you may deal one damage to this item to test will uh, is will yeah will deal damage to that monster equal to the result so there we go there are three sturdy investigators okay right i think on that basis um we are ready to to make a move we can take the dice cam off sorry don't know why that was up oh sorry should have told you we've got a dice cam cheeky little dice cam there we go right let's put the rules there so we know what we're doing and i think at that point we are ready to start Now, Zoe's going to want to kill the Wendigo. Now, the Wendigo is just lurking. He's going to spread terror in the neighbourhood. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get to that at the moment. So, oh, actually, I should have done this. Action phase. We're in the action phase, and we're going to start off... Who are we going to start off with? Gonna need to get to um, Central Kingsport is a priority. Now we can use travel routes. To, uh, there's travel routes in this game now, and we can see we've got sort of roadway travel routes. We've got steam paddle routes. We've got sort of train routes where basically you can move. Oh, I'll show you when we get there effectively, but um, we can move between because these two aren't actually connected to the board. If you look, they're they're separate. They are connected via the travel routes. Um, well, let's get let's get Zoe moving. Let's get Zoe going, and she is going to. What is she going to do? She's going to start to head towards. Um, she's not that great at warding. She's only going to roll one dice to do that. Um, oh no, she's got three law. That's a. Yeah. So Zoe's going to move. One, two. Um, and she'll pay a dollar. To move once more so she's going to end up in the black cave this game is all about keeping things <laughs> under control so her second action um, she is going to ward in the black cave now ward is where we're testing law and remove doom equal to the test result um, from your space. So let's have a bring up the dice cam. Now she's got four. No, she's got three law, so she's going to be rolling three dice. And in this game, fives and sixes are counted as a success. So let's see what she can do. She gets two successes. So she is going to ward that doom on the black cave so let's try and keep this stuff under control so that is Zoe done I think I'm going to probably try and keep Velma and I uh, say Velma uh, Kate and Preston together so she could go one two to move there three four what we want to do is we want to get over here and that's going to be the quickest route to get there yeah one two power dollar three and then they're gonna to have to go over there so I'm not gonna come down I'm gonna come down here so let's go with Kate who is gonna go one two Does she spend another dollar? 
Does she spend her two dollars? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. It could be a mistake. Three, four to there. And that is Kate. Actually, say so that's Kate. She's only had one action. She's only had one action, which is to move. Um, she will. Is she going to focus, or is she going to gain the dollar? she's going to focus she's going to focus her law so she's going to focus her law gives a plus one so she's up to four four law so that's it for Kate Preston he's going to do a very similar thing so he's going to go one two three four and pay two dollars to get there That's him there. That was his first action. And second action. He's going to focus his observation. He's going to focus his observation, so it takes him up to three observation. And that's it for the action phase. We now go across to the monster phase. So the monster phase says each ready monster activates usually by moving. We've got two monsters on the board that don't actually move, but they do do stuff. So let's take one of those monsters at a time. So we'll start off with a high priest who is, he's up here at Innsmouth Shore and we know what he does. He places one doom in that space. So here's the doom, places that in his space. And then the Wendigo spreads terror in this neighborhood. So spreading terror. To spread terror, place one terror token in the indicated neighborhood. So that is gonna go, well, it's a bit like a clue. It goes in the middle, so that goes there and then attach the top card of the terror deck to that neighborhood by laying the card across the neighborhood to counter deck. So that's what we're gonna do. So we get our terror deck, and I will show that I have shuffled it, but I'm gonna shuffle it on camera, so. Oh God. Seriously. Categories all cut. And then that goes on the top of north side. And then again, I'll show you that when we get to it. So that's both those monsters done. There is no, there are no other monsters on the board at the moment. So then we go across to the encounter phase. And we'll start off with Zoe. Zoe is in Rivertown, so she gets an encounter card from the deck. I've not got all the decks on the on the board on the video there, but they're on the side. So she's in Riverside and she's at the Black Cave. And the Black Cave says Oops. As you make your way quickly through the cave, you notice hastily sketched symbols attached across the ceiling. Test law. So we're three, we'll have a look at that in a second. Bring up the dice cam, so we've got three law. She passes. If you pass, you realize the drawings point to a secret cache with a few ancient tomes inside. Gain one spell and become driven. Wow. 
let's just put this down for a second. Spell deck. Again, first time we're using it, so we'll give it a good old gentle shuffle. Try not to spill any of them. And then we'll do Cat Weasel Cut. And she is going to get Intervene. Two handed spell, costs two sanity. Once per round, while another investigator on any space is resolving a test, you may test law minus one, and you can add that to the other investigator's test result. Okay, quite handy. So Zoe's going to get intervene. And also, she becomes driven. So this is one of the, these um, shards on dark, no, fatigued, driven. Okay, so just get these out. These are all the fatigue cards. Oh, they don't really make any difference, I don't think. So we'll just take one, which is your focus limit is increased by one. At the end of the turn, if you are not fatigued, you may flip this card to perform one additional action. That's good. So that's Zoe. We'll do Kate next, and Kate is at south side. So her card is going to be south side. She's at the historical society. The man outside seems rather out of place, and he claims that the curator assumed the material he wanted to donate was stolen and wouldn't accept it. He explains that he found the item in a dream and woke up with it in his hand. He offers it to you. You may become tainted to gain a curio. So the curio items are Lucky Cigarette Case, which is a common curio, which is $5 or secret page, get plus two law as part of award action. Ooh, can't quite remember what Tainted does, but I'm gonna make the decision before I know. Do I go for Lucky Cigarette Case? $5. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So, lucky cigarette case becomes Kate's. And might become tainted. <laughs> Could be a bad mistake. Tainted. Oh, these are ones that are all different. So, let's just grab all of the tainted ones. Shuffle. But we've got the lucky cigarette case for five dollars so that was that one and then we'll go to Preston who's gonna he's also at the historical society one of the other patrons has located a dangerous object in the society's collection and you join forces to stop it gain one ally you feel oh, oh let's do the ally bit first it just says you gain an ally so we don't have no choice in that. Ugh. Again, give these a shuffle. 
Oh my god. 100% record of dropping these cards so far. Cat Weasel cut, and then we are going to get Chuck Fergus, Hobanian Driver. While performing a move action, monsters do not engage you, but importantly, it gives us two health and three sanity. That's good. That was Preston. Seems quite fitting, actually. Preston's got a mob sort of uh, handyman. And then, what does it say? You feel a host. You can feel a hostile aura emanating from a statue statue in the East Gallery, and you know its hunger must be sated somehow. Become tainted unless you spend one remnant. Uh, well, at this point, we haven't got any remnants, but I say poor old um, Preston's going to become tainted as well. Tainted cards again. Middle one, take that one. So Preston is tainted. Okay, so that is it for the encounter phase. We then move on to the ever delightful mythos phase. We've got our bag here. And what we'll do, I'll sit back down so I keep standing up and down. Let's bring up the dice cam and then I've got the, the bag here. We'll draw out the bag. So the first one, we're going to go again with Zoe first of all. We'll keep to the same order. She's the lead investigator. So we're going to get, Zoe's going to get, um, oh, a headline, which is going to be top card. Choose one, place one doom in your area spawn one monster in your space. Ooh, let's do with the Doom. Let's go with the Doom. They're not quite ready to start killing things yet, so we're going to put Doom in the space there. That goes there as a discard. So that was Preston's first. But, um, Zoe's first one, sorry. Oh, play, no, it's not Zoe. Place one Doom in your area. Zoe, second one, she's going to get <laughs> another headline. She's liking reading the paper at the minute, and she's going to get Test Will. Oh, she's four. So she is four, that's good. So get four dice. She passes. If you pass, pass become driven. She's already driven, so you can't be you can't be double driven, I don't think, if you fail become fatigued. Well we, we passed, so that's all good. So that's Zoe done for the mythos. Then we move on, we'll go to Kate next. And she's gonna get first one is a spawn monster. So again, it's just been a while since I played, so I'm gonna make sure I get everything. Draw the bottom card and spawn the monster. So, just turn that off for a sec. We're going to take the bottom card, and this is going to be a guardian beast monster Shantak servitor. Spawn at most doom, and it patrols. Move towards unstable space, engage higher strength. So, moves to three. So, spawn at most doom. Well, they've all got one Doom. I don't think there's anywhere, by the looks of it, that has more than one Doom. Now, am I a bit cheeky here? I think I'm gonna be Zoe's, Zoe's, our, Zoe's our killer. Zoe is our killer. I 
I'm going to be probably a bad move, but I'm going to spawn it at the Black Cave, which then in turn means it becomes engaged with Zoe. We'll flip it over so we know what we're doing. So I've already decided to do that. It's got two health, plus two. Minus one strength, minus one no observation. Elite one, massive. Retaliate. After you perform an attack action, if you did not damage this monster, it attacks you. And it does two damage and one sanity. I think that plus two is plus two health per investigator. Let me just check that. But as it becomes engaged, um, I am gonna deal one, I'm gonna test Law. I'm now, so I'm going to test Will for Zoe, which is four dice. Let's just move this out of the way for a second. Four dice, which we pass, which means we deal um, one damage to the item. So we put one damage on it. And we deal deal damage to that monster equal to your test result. Well, we've got two successes there. So we've done two damage already to the Guardian Beast without even doing anything other than that. And I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's it. So Zoe's second pull from the Mythos Cup, or Mythos Bag, is a blank. So she's good, and then we move. No. Ah. No, 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 no. We were doing Kate. Sorry, my apologies. Zoe was reading the paper. Oh, too many things going on. My apologies. Gonna have to backtrack for a sec. Ugh, let's take that off. Take that off. Actually, we'll we'll leave it. We'll leave it like that because Kate could have decided to place it in the space with. Um, it says spawn at most doom. Zoe's in the space with one doom. So yeah, that's all fine. That's Kate, and then she got Kate got her her blank. So that's good. Oh, thank God for that. Right, okay, so then we're moving on to Preston, finally, for his two, and we're gonna draw a blank, and then we're gonna draw Spread Doom. Bottom card of the event deck. And that's gonna be East Town, and it's gonna be Hibbs Roadhouse. Gibbs Roadhouse is spreading doom. So that's got two doom on it. And then what we'll do... Uh, that then just goes... Hibbs, Hibbs Roadhouse basically becomes the... Um, becomes the unstable space. Okay, that's it for the Mythos phase, for that, that bit. We go back to the Action phase. Let me just check the monsters, because the Guardian, I think that plus 2 plus means it is um, 2 health per, per monster. Bear with me. Two plus because the rest of them will get yeah. So it's got six health. So let's let's start off with um, Zoe in the action phase. What have we got? She's got a strength of three. So first of all, because I'm engaged with the monster. Um, the only things that I can do are focus, attack, or evade, which is fine. So 
Zoe is going to, first of all, she's going to focus her strength. Plus one. And then she's going to attack with her chef's knife. Now the chef's knife, uh, well, her strength now is four. So we'll put four dice in the dice cam so we can see what we're doing. That's her, she gets plus two. Uh, and then because of her strength, she gets, uh, because of she's focused, she's going to get seven, actually. No, plus two. Sorry, yeah, that's right. Three normally. Uh, four, two for the uh, chef's knife, and then one for focusing. So she's at four, plus two is six. Come on, Zoe. Come on, Zoe. Okay, she's done two. She's done two damage. Has she got any re-rolls? No, she's done two. So that takes up to four, four damage. Let's just look at her. So after you defeat a monster, after you defeat a monster, so she hasn't defeated, after you re-roll the die, she hasn't got anything to actually, Actually, what she's going to do is she's going to spend her focus to re-roll one of those dice and then we get to add plus one to it. So we've got two successes so far, which we've already done on the monster. We'll re-roll this one. <laughs> one plus one is still not a success. So she's done two damage uh, to the monster. Okay, well I just have to live with that. That's Zoe done. We'll move on to Kate. Kate is going to, she's gonna to have to gather resources for her first action, which gives her a dollar. There's a reason for doing this. And then she's gonna go across to the travel route for a move, so one to there. She spends her dollar, because you have to spend a dollar to travel. She spends her dollar to travel there, and two takes her into the Nell's Curiosity Shop. So that's both of her actions. She got a dollar and then she's moved. Preston is gonna do a similar thing. He's gonna move, pay his dollar, there, and finish one to there. And then what's Preston going to do? What's Preston going to do? He's going to gather resources. So he's going to gain a dollar when he gathers resources. After I perform a gather action, place two dollars on his car. That's his family inheritance. So we're going to put two dollars on family inheritance, like so. so. That's his two actions. Um, right. Hang on a sec. Let me just, I'm just reading. Just looking at the Reckoning on Tainted. So, Zoe went first. And she drew two headlines. Then, Kate went and she drew a monster and a blank. So it says a Tainted, after you draw a blank, 
place one doom in your space so my apologies just catching these as we go so there would have been a doom in historical society and then similar thing for Preston he drew uh, doom and a, and a blank so he would have spread do he would have put a doom in his historical space as well sorry um, trying to um, marry a few things up here need to remember that next time round okay right that's it for Preston that's it for the action phase we're going to move on to the monster phase and first things first matey boy up the top there is going to put a doom in Gilman's house the Wendigo is going to spread terror in the north side so that's two on there now and we put another terror card on top of north side so that's them two done um, so them, them two have activated they don't move then we go on to engage monsters ouch the guardian the guardian beast is going to hit zoe for two health um, two health and one sanity he's a bit of a beast Zoe, I don't think he does anything else. Retaliate after you perform the reduction. We did damage him, so that was fine. We did damage him, so that was good. Okay, that's it for the monster phase. We then move on to the encounter phase. Again, we'll start off with Zoe. Unfortunately, she doesn't have an encounter because she's too busy dealing with this guardian beast. But we then do get an encounter with uh, Kate and Preston. We'll start with Kate, and we are at the Central Kingsport. So we'll take top card off the Central Kingsport deck. Hopefully, it's going to be a clue. It is, and we're at Nell's Curiosity Shop, which means you hide next to Nell as the two of you try. This is Kate as you try to covertly watch a strange, foul caricature of Nell amble through the shop searching for something. Test observation. Okay, so Kate is observation of four, which is good. So four dice. Okay. She smashes it with three successes. We don't even need to use the lucky case, cigarette case. So it says, where are we? Nell's Curiosity Shop. If you pass, you see this eerie duplicate, choose a particular carving and leave, and leave with it. Gain one clue from your neighborhood. So there we go. That is a clue on Kate. So that then goes over here and the unstable space becomes Nell's Curiosity Shop. So that's it for Kate's encounter. Then we go across to Preston's encounter. We're going to draw the same card or top card from Central Kingsport. And it is another clue and here's a Nell's Curiosity Shop. An old hunter brings Brickle, but his Brickle Brack to sell to Nell. He tells you that he's seen this evil before, this evil cold before, up north. Gain one clue from your neighbourhood. So he just straight up gets a clue. Nell wants to buy the man's wares, but he's low on cash. Both of them look at you expectantly, hoping you'll make some purchases. You may buy any number of curios from the display. Okay, so that's going to go back there. Oh, we forgot to get our next item out, which is going to be a knife. A 
by any number of curios. Well, the only thing that you can buy, because the there's two curios on there now, the secret page before, which is plus two as Ward, that's three dollars, because Preston's only got two. But the knife is a common curio, and he gets plus one strength. He's strengthful, yeah, we'll get him, we'll buy him that. We'll, buy, we'll spend a dollar. Buy the knife. So he gets the knife. One handed. Makes him it takes him up to strength four, which is not shabby. Let's replace that while we think about it. And we're gonna get magnifying glass plus one observation as part of research action. And that is it for the encounter phase. So let's move across to the ever delightful mythos phase and we'll work through as we did before. We'll start off with Zoe as our lead investigator. She's going to get a clue. So we're going to spawn a clue. That's the top card of the event deck. This one here, in's mouth sure. So we just put that there for a second. We'll grab a clue. That goes into in's mouth sure. Top two cards of the in's mouth sure deck. Those two plus that one. Our shore back goes back there. So that's Zoe's first mythos. And she hasn't got the tainted things, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we're going to go back to the cam and we're going to draw. The second one for Zoe is going to be Spawn a Monster. Okay. Spawn a Monster. So this is Zoe spawning it. Spawn at Street near. It's a hulking thrall. Thrall, monster human thrall. Got two movements, spawn at street nearest prey, move towards and engage highest observation. Preston is two, Kate is four, Zoe is one. So street, we're gonna do this. Counts as a street, oh my god. So that's it for Zoe. Zoe's mythos phase, then we're gonna to go to Kate, Kate's first one is Spawn of Doom. Take the bottom card. Place one Doom in the location. So that's going to be the train station at north side. Train station at north side. And then that goes to there. So the train station becomes the Unstable space. Six or more dooms. So we're all okay there at the moment. So that's the second one for um, that's the second one. Please count one, two. That was the first one for Kate. First one for Kate, sorry. First one for Kate. Second one for Kate. It's going to be. Ooh, Gate Burst. Delightful. Take the top card of the event deck and place one Doom token in each space in the neighbourhood. And that is, oh my god, Central Kingsport. One Doom in each location. So coming over here. One. Two, three. So that's a five doom now. Um, shuffle the card into the discard piles and place on the bottom. So these all come out. We shuffle them up. Oh my God. A 
I've got, I've got my hands around a, a tripod at the moment. That's my excuse. Right, and then those go on the bottom of the deck. The unstable space now becomes Velma's diary, diner. So that was the second one for, for Kate. And then we've got Preston, who is gonna get first one for him. Reckoning. Resolve the reckoning effects of all components in play. Right, let's start off with um, the actual main sheet. Oh, that makes sense, and then we'll work our way across. Place one doom in any space in either in Innsmouth and in Kingsport. So, right, okay, some things to do here. So, we'll place it in Falcon Point. Or actually, no, we'll place it in Marsh Refinery, because if we need to go there, we can. Um, and then we place one in, there we go. Actually, no, let's do this. Um, and then it says, because we that's that done, that's that bit done, so that's all done. And then it says, um, when a neighbourhood has six or more doom, remove all doom from one space in that neighbourhood and place one doom on the scenario sheet. So we're going to take these three off and place one doom on the scenario sheet. Then spread terror in that neighbourhood. So. Terra, Central Kingsport, and then a Terra card goes on top of Central Kingsport's deck. So that was that. So the reckoning, that's the, the reckoning from Ithaca's children done. Have we got any more? Yes, we have. We've got a Tainted for Preston. So flip this card. evil that has taken root within you has only grown with time. At first it was easy to blame the calamity that dogs your steps on simple misfortune. Now you know with increasing certainty that something deep inside you is actively sabotaging. Test will, oh dear. Preston's will is one. Preston's will is one. So let's do the dice cam. He fails. What have we got? Uh, oh, recommend for the family inheritance. I'll do that quickly. Take gain one dollar and all of the money off the card. So take two dollars there, gain a dollar. So that's that reckoning done. Let's move back to the um, money talks when resolving a test you may spend one dollar to roll a die re-roll a die we'll spend that dollar to re-roll this dice and he gets a success naught to one you become cursed plus two no effect ah oh, that's annoying Poor old Preston's become cursed. Okay. Then discard this card. So, cursed is successes, sixes are successes. That takes it can go back in the pile. So that's that reckoning done. We've done the reckoning on family inheritance. Then we've got Kate Winthrop. He's got a reckoning, so fit this card. Your tainted blood calls to something in the darkness with a resonance you feel deep in your core. In your core. Tonight, something calls back. Test will and resolve the effect based on that. So she is a will of two. Fails. Once per round, you may roll add one, may add one to the result of the test. Once 
points per round. When you re-roll the die, you may add one to that test, but there's no points of one or two. We could spend the law to re-roll. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. So it will be. So it says zero successes. Spawn one monster in your space. If it engages an investigator, that monster attacks. So once per round. Right. Let's draw the monster first of all, which is a terrified wanderer. Um, so it's going to be spawning in our space, but once per round we're going to kick in the Flux Stabilizer. When a Doom or non-Epic Monster would be placed in your neighbourhood, you may discard it instead, which is what I'm going to do. So um, that Cursed doesn't do anything. So he goes to the pile and Tainted goes away. And there we go. And then we've got one more from Preston, I think. So much going on. Um, so let's just check. So one, two, three, one, two, yep, yeah, one more to go for Preston. And what's he gonna get? He's gonna get oh spawn a monster. Oh no, sorry, spread doom, spread doom. Discard the bottom card of the event deck and place one doom in its place. So the bottom card is East Town and we're gonna place a doom in Hibs Roadhouse. And that is the end of the mythos phase. And I think we'll call it there for episode one of uh, Ithaca's Children for Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. That was an interesting couple of turns. Uh, things have gone south quite quickly. Poor old Preston's cursed. But there we go. It is one of those things. So hopefully you enjoyed this playthrough. Um, I, I really like it. It's lots of moving pieces. Um, I suppose I should have said this right at the start, but th there will be mistakes I make, <laughs> um, pretty much guaranteed. I'll try to keep them to, to uh, a limit, um, but obviously, you know, sometimes uh, things get past you by. But if you spot anything I've done wrong or tactics, then please let me know in the comments because that'd be really helpful and really useful. But anyway, um, I've kept you long enough today, so hopefully you're enjoying it, and I will see you at episode two for more Arkham Horror third edition. Touchy bye for now.